Hello there, thanks for joining me and welcome to this short presentation detailing my experience of building the Combrig 1 700th scale kit of HMS Agincourt. Agincourt already had a bit of history even before she entered service. She was built at Armstrong's on order from Brazil who were unable to pay so she was then sold to Turkey and finally was appropriated for the Royal Navy in 1914. As completed, she was the longest battleship in the world, carried the greatest number of heavy guns in the largest number of turrets and also had the heaviest secondary armament. This came at a cost though, her armour being thinner than any other battleship in the fleet. Even today controversy persists about how useful a unit she actually was. Nevertheless, her uniqueness is always going to appeal to ship modellers. I purchased this example from Starling Models at the 2018 Scale Model World Show. Combrig have been around for some time now and even though this particular subject has been effectively overtaken by the newer Flyhawk injection moulded item, building it does give an insight into the quality of Combrig products and there's always a chance you may come across a second hand one. The kit very cleanly moulded and has well detailed major parts, offset to an extent by poor packaging and rather mediocre instructions. The box is actually a bit too short for the hull, so a chip had broken off the bow on my example and was missing, and a section of the railing for the rear superstructure had also broken off, but as the bit was present it was easily repaired. Assembly is simple if you're happy to build the kit straight from the box. Parts fit together well with little cleaning up required. If you want to improve the kit you have a problem because it contains no photo etch parts at all. So you'll need to sort your own which fortunately I was able to do. One or two other minor improvements can be made. For example several scuttles have been missed off the superstructure and these need drilling out. Also Several doors and ladders have been missed off the superstructure too. Good reference drawings from Bert will show you what's required. Despite the instructions rather coyly referring to a photo etch when adding the anchor chains, these aren't actually provided. The anchors themselves are very fragile resin mouldings, two of which had broken and were of little use anyway. These etch metal replacements found from my spares box look a lot better. However the high quality of the moulding is evident in these pictures of the hull. Mind you it does require some careful painting. I used Humbrol 64 for the grey and various Vallejo acrylics for the rest incidentally. The trickiest job of the entire build was lining up the tripod foremast with the platforms around it and getting everything square and level not helped by the fact that the main platform had warped a bit and needed some careful hot water treatment to straighten it out. The funnel caps were a problem. I ended up adding them from fine stretched sprue. Not totally accurate, but a lot better than nothing. Here's the main hull moulding painted and weathered prior to adding the rest of the superstructure. Weathering was done with a thin black wash and some gentle use of weathering powders. The tiny davits on the fore and aft superstructure need adding from brass wire. The resin items provided in the kit are so fragile that they're really unusable. There are a series of support struts under the main bridge platform that are missing from the kit. They need adding from plastic strip, three on each side. I'd finished the model before I discovered this omission, but may add them retrospectively. The prominent boat booms are missing from the aft superstructure and need adding from sprue or brass rod. Also, all of the yards were replaced with brass rod as the resin items provided are over scale. The positioning of the numerous boats is not well explained in the instructions. But I expect we'll all have a copy of Bert, which is pretty essential if you want to improve this kit. The two small boats hanging inwards from the fore and aft superstructure are not mentioned in the instructions and are a real fiddle to fit. But the boats themselves are another example of neat moulding. 
The enzyme was added from the Starling Models decal sheet and only a minimum of rigging was included as I feel it soon looks over scale on a 1700 scale model. The addition of deck rail is a bit of a moot point on a 700 scale kit isn't it as it can so easily look over scale. Gold metal models do the finest stuff I can find so I use that. I think it just about works but you can make your own mind up about that one. Despite my various grumbles I enjoyed building this kit. Good quality mouldings and a generally good fit of parts eased construction and improving it is not difficult if you have the necessary spares. I paid the equivalent of 60 euros for my sample which I guess is about par for a resin kit of this sort but I really feel a brass fret should have been included. I notice that current Combrig releases sometimes come with an etched brass set but are released more cheaply without one. As the difference only seems to be about 5 euros, I'd suggest it's worth going for the brass option every time. So, thank you very much for listening. I hope you found this show useful and enjoyable and that you'll join me again next time. Hopefully HMS Ajax will be featuring soon. Thanks again for listening. Bye now.